So, um, welcome back. I've uh, got another cup of tea now. I um, hope you've got another, another beer or whatever you're on. Um, and we'll just kind of run through side scan um, sonar. Uh, kind of, yeah, it's applicable to kayak fishing. I know there's plenty of guys out there who've got side scan on their boats. Just be aware that your side scan will probably cost as much as your kayak um, and could cost uh, twice as much as your kayak depending on what quality of screen you went for. Um, that takes us back to earlier again, quality of screen. The, the, the bigger the screen and the more pixels that you have on it, the better the image you're going to see. And that's particularly important with side scan sonar because the side scan sonar is returning such massive, massive levels of uh, information. Again, it uses sound waves to build up a picture, but instead of just having sort of one or two beams going down into the water column, it sweeps side to side like that. So it's drawing a picture. Um, so the first thing you'll notice is that the image scrolls down the screen, and that's as the boat moves forwards, which is in that direction, so the, the image scrolls downwards. Um, unlike a traditional fish finder where the boat is normally in the top right hand corner of the screen, so that's there, uh, that's here for you guys at the boat, and the image scrolls across the screen like that. Um, like that. Uh, so that's the bottom. So side scan, it scrolls downwards, and the boat is normally in the middle of the screen at the top there. Um, so the the system scans side to side like that and builds up an image. And it really is pretty much a picture of what's down below. Um, the only thing that confuses people sometimes when they look at side scan sonar is that there's quite often there's a strip, there's like a gap down the middle of the screen. Now, I'll explain to you what, what that is. Um, First of all, you've got to appreciate that with side scan sonar, we're trying to put a three dimensional image, it's like the seabed and the water column, um, onto a two dimensional screen, which poses a couple of problems. And the way that the, the sonar fish finder tacky bloke world works means that they've, they've come up with doing it like follows. Okay, so this is our little, I'm coming back closer to the, to the camera here, uh, this is our model of, of what we need to see on the screen. If you imagine this represents the surface of the water and, and say our boat is here, uh, we want to see the water column, we want to see what's happening in the water underneath us and then we want to see the seabed out to the sides. So boat, water column, seabed. Um, to get that onto a 2D screen, we've done that, okay? So when you're looking at the screen, this is the seabed out to that side, this is the seabed out to that side, and this down the middle is the water column underneath your boat, okay? And obviously, you know, if our boat was here, this is the history of what we've just passed over. So, boom. So, it's one to, to get your head round, and by all means, after you've finished watching this, go and get a piece of paper, and go, yeah, that's what it is in the real world, that's what it is on the screen. And it, it, it's as simple as that, okay? So, uh, yeah, if you're not sure, go and get a piece of paper and get your head around that afterwards. Um, Go online and look at side imaging images, millions and millions of them in the, on the internet. I don't need to waste your time bringing them up now in a presentation. But basically, the sound image, if there's something solid, the sound image bounces off it, or the sound wave, I should say, bounces off the image and provides what we call a hard return. So if there was like a, you know, I don't know, a big, um, well, let's say a wreck, you know, the hull of a ship, the set, and it's out to the side, out to that side of us as we're paddling along. So the wreck's kind of like over there somewhere. 
On the screen, we'll get a really strong, and it's normally white or a very light colour coming up, and it, it'll look like the, the hull of a ship, because that's what it's bouncing off. So as we paddle along, sort of com coming down onto, into the screen, you'll see a really hard image of the, the hull of the ship. Then behind it, you'll see a shadow. And that's just, if you imagine you were using a light beam instead of a sound beam or a sound wave, and you could put your head through your kayak and shine, that, shine a torch beam out that way, you'd have a strong reflection of light coming back off the hull of the ship. And then the other side of it, there'd be a dark area, there'd be a shadow. Well, it's exactly the same with the sound wave. So the length of the shadow then gives you an idea of how high the wreck is in terms of its, its height sitting on the seabed. The higher the wreck, you know, the bigger, the, the deeper the wreck is, the longer that shadow is going to be. So by looking at these images, then it really is something that you just need to spend a bit of time doing. You'll get to see things just start to jump out at you off the screen. Um, there's, uh, there's, there's solid items like wrecks and stuff, but then also you get to see weed and you know seaweed and softer features. They appear more dappled. They don't give such a strong reflection of the sound wave. So obviously some of the sound waves get lost if they carry on going through the reeds, uh, through the weed, and some of it will bounce back. So it looks softer, because it is. I mean, shipwrecks are generally harder than seaweed. Seaweed, a bit softer than a shipwreck. Um, and you can see that on the images as well. Um, obviously you can see the undulations. Um, one of the marks that we, we sort of paddle out to and fish a lot, there's, um, there's lots of hollows in the seabed. I don't know why they're there. They're always there. Um, it must be to do with the currents or something. And you just see these these shadows. There's no there's no hard return, but there's definitely a shadow. Well, that's going to be a hollow in the seabed um, where the sound wave uh, basically. I'll, I'll draw you a diagram for that one. Um, hollow. Sound, uh, sound wave comes in, there's going to be an area here where the sound wave doesn't, you know, there'll be a strong, there'll be a bounce back from here and there'll be a shadow there. So that denotes, that will show you that there's a, there's a hollow in the seabed. You'll see the shadow and then a bit of a bounce back off the other side of it. Um, Particularly, if you go onto the Hummingbird website, I know they've got a really good selection of images on there, and you just start to see it. Um, moving on from that, if you, say for, say for now, we're, we're paddling along, and we're scanning, uh, I don't know, 50 metres either side, which is about the max most of these units will do, 50 metres either side, so you can scan 100 metres of, of seabed. Um, say we see a wreck, appear but it's right out, it's out on the edge of the screen here so it, it's probably nearly 50 meters out that side but by the time it's appeared on the screen we've gone past it so all we know is it's nearly 50 meters out to the side and behind us somewhere with the hummingbird units and i think you can probably do this with some of the others but obviously i'm mainly hummingbird knowledge based um, you move the cursor over the wreck on the screen, just with the little arrows, and if you hit mark, the unit will calculate to within two meters where that spot on your screen is. Then you flip through to your GPS screen, and you can then follow yourself to sit exactly over that wreck, which we never went over in the first place. We went past it but we've now got an exact location to go and fish it. And we've, I've even fished wrecks, and I can tell you whether I'm sitting over the bow or the stern of the shipwreck because of the accuracy of the, first of all, the, the pictorial image you get by paddling past it. You don't need to go over it, because obviously if you were using, going back to our earlier single or dual beam, you'd pretty much have to go over the wreck to know it's there. But with side scan, you're scanning 100 metres you don't even need to go over the wreck. Even if you miss the wreck, it'll appear 
on you know, one side of the screen or the other. And you can then mark it on the sonar screen and the unit calculates where that is based with its GPS. So you can then flick through, as I say, mm -hmm. and you'll have a mark and you can you just press navigate to and it tells you what bearing you need to be paddling on and how far and you can monitor your progress obviously on the, on the GPS screen so that you can get sit right over that location. So in terms of what the, what these side scan units can do, phenomenal. Um, not just for fishing but we sell them well into dive clubs. The diving guys love it because they spend half their lives driving around on ribs looking for wrecks that they know are there somewhere. Now they only have to be within 100 metres maybe and they'll see it on the screen and then you can get an exact fix and go and sit over it. Um, and also the police, uh, police dive teams, um, there's most of the police dive teams in the UK now uh, use this because they can scan such large areas of water very quickly and discount them from their investigations, uh, which is more how I use my side scan. I use it if I'm looking for new fishing spots, I'll, I'll scan a whole load of seabed and discount it. Probably never even bother going there again. You then find a couple of good spots and you mark them. But it's a very easy way of discounting large areas um, there's an area up on the clean which I've been quite keen to fish for some time on the clean peninsula. It just has a nice look about it and you know I think that it might be worth fishing there. Uh, we went over it with a side scan a month or so ago and uh, it's going to be a waste of time. <laughs> um, it was pretty featureless even though all the other indicators kind of told us there'd probably be some features down there worth fishing. There wasn't. So I'm not going to waste my life fishing that spot. It would have been nice, but it just ain't going to be worth it. But we did find that we found a wreck on our way to that, which is well worth fishing, which we would never have known was there. Um, and again, we didn't actually go over that wreck. We passed it and it came up on the edge of the screen. And we then did some more investigation and uh, we've marked it for future use. Um, so that's side scan sonar, really. Um, if this or the previous part of this recorded lecture talk, whatever you want to call it, um, has pinged up any questions, um, you can always message me through the YouTube channel uh, that this has been broadcast to you on, and uh, I'll uh, normally be able to answer that, questions, um, if not, I can always find out the answer for you and get back to you. Um, so yeah, the YouTube channel is Mr. Justin Snell, um, drop me a message on there, apart from that, um, enjoy your day. Thanks for your time. Bye.